and now I, I lost everything. I work at a homeless shelter and now I'm homeless. A massive apartment fire displacing dozens of people in Southwest Portland's Goose Hollow neighborhood. You're watching Queen 6 News at 10. I'm Elizabeth Din. I'm Jeff Gianola. Crew still on the scene tonight. They will be there tomorrow morning working to contain the flames and hot spots. And let's check in with our Jamie Seymour live tonight with the very latest into the investigation. And Jamie, you also spoke with a few of those who lost their homes in this heartbreaking ordeal. Jeff, Liz, this fire is still under investigation as the entire building at Southwest 14th and Taylor is at risk of collapsing. I'm going to step off just so you can see this is still a very active scene. 12 hours later, as we pulled up, we could still see flames outside of the windows on the southeast side of the building. Crews are still actively pouring water into the building at times. And earlier, some of the residents we spoke with say they don't know what they're going to do now. I just lost everything I own and I have nowhere to go and I don't know what I'm going to do. Many now without a home after an apartment building in Portland's Goose Hollow neighborhood went up in flames, reported to have started on the third floor. Built in 1910, had around 60 apartments inside and firefighters believe everyone was able to make it out safely. Captured on video, crews on ladders rescued residents from fire escapes. At least one firefighter was injured by window glass and another was taken to the hospital with cardiac issues and high blood pressure. Now crews will spend the next day continuing to monitor any additional flare ups. The structure itself is compromised. It itself is an unreinforced masonry building that has had significant fire impingement, at least in the third and fourth floors, if not lower. Portland Fire and Rescue says at least two buildings immediately to the south of the apartments were likely saved but the risk of collapse doesn't necessarily have them in the clear yet. Fire and Rescue says structural engineers will be out Wednesday to determine if what remains will need to be demolished. One of those displaced, Michael Harple, works overnight and was just heading to bed when the fire started. I was just getting ready to go to bed and I smelled smoke. I didn't hear any fire alarm, no sprinklers went off, nothing. Another resident, John Judge, tells Coin6 he also didn't hear anything until Harple knocked on his door to get him out adding that much of the building has had issues with a resident pulling the fire alarm multiple times a week at all hours. Our alarms have been going off every day for four months, but today when there's actually a fire in the building, no alarm went off until after the fire department was there and had their hoses in the building. We asked Portland Fire and Rescue about these allegations and if arson may be to blame, but they could only say that it's still under investigation. The American Red Cross was on site all day to help residents with immediate needs, from water and snacks to diapers, adding that volunteers will also be on hand for longer term plans. And I think a lot of them are still trying to, to understand what's happened to them and their lives, um, and that's where we come in. Harple works at a local homeless shelter and now faced with the devastation is unsure what to do next. I lost everything I own, man, Every, everything, everything I worked for. We learned a little bit ago that the Red Cross has now set up a shelter at the University of Portland. Anyone interested in helping or making a donation can contact them. Now they are still working to get an exact number of how many people have been displaced. Reporting live in Southwest Portland, Jamie Seymour, Queen 6 News. Jamie, thank you. And the streets right next to that smoldering building could stay closed for days. That's because fire crews need to continue to monitor the building and also to allow for heavy equipment to be used later on. The Oregon Department of Transportation closed Interstate 405 earlier today because of concerns that the building would collapse. The lanes back open tonight and some on the off ramps remain closed. This is what the building looked like earlier today. So you can see how much black smoke was pouring into the air. The air condition was unhealthy for those surrounding neighborhoods at that time. And Coin 6 looking into the history of this building. Here's what we know tonight. City code enforcement inspected it just yesterday, following up on some relatively minor safety violations, finding that most things had actually been corrected. City records say that this was built in 1910. The current market value is nearly $6 million. It is on the city's list of unreinforced masonry buildings. That means it is more likely to collapse in an earthquake. The Fire Bureau says that there's also a greater danger of collapse in this situation. The building did not have a sprinkler system and it was not required to. You see, Oregon first adopted a sprinkler building code requirement in 1990 for apartment buildings more than two stories tall and had 16 or more units. 
In 2004, it was amended to require that all apartments have sprinklers. If a building is remodeled, then it may need to add sprinklers. Let's talk about the weather right now. And here we are 